What up, y'all? Welcome back to the channel. Today we're talking about YouTube monetization. If you're new to the platform and you want to start making some money, this is the video for you. Let's get in. Making some cheddar, making some skrilla. That's what it's all about, right? So I'm actually going to break up this YouTube monetization video into three separate parts. And that's because there are different layers that we should talk about. First of all, you have to have a thousand subscribers to be monetized. You have to have 4,000 qualified watch hours. You have to have a channel that's 30 days old. So those are the three main components that you need to have to get YouTube monetized. So I'm gonna break this into three different parts. Part one, today we're gonna to talk about 4,000 qualified watch hours, how to get those watch hours and how to get them as fast as possible. That's this video. Part two is gonna be how to get 1,000 subscribers. And then in my part three of this video, I'm gonna talk about how much I'm actually making being YouTube monetized with about 2,000 subscribers so far. So still a somewhat small YouTuber. I think that'd be interesting to a lot of you. YouTube monetization means if you become a partner, you get into the partner program with YouTube to be able to run qualified ads to your audience on your videos and be able to make a split of the profits off those ads. Now that split is a 55-45 split in favor of you, so you get 55% and YouTube takes 45%. And then you can be able to run ads like bumper ads or ads over your video or pre-roll to be able to get some revenue generation. Really quickly, I think we should define what those qualified watch hours are. So you need 4,000 qualified watch hours and what those aren't are YouTube uh, shorts. So the YouTube shorts do not count for qualified watch hours. So right off the bat, I would say don't focus on those at all unless it's just for fun. But if you're trying to focus on monetization, focus on the videos that you can post to your channel because those are gonna be the bulk of your qualified watch hours. Something that also qualifies are a YouTube live. Say if it's like an hour YouTube live that you do and then you end up posting that then to your channel that will count as a qualified watch hours. But what will not count is if you do like a 24 hour or 48 hour live stream, uh, that just kind of goes on to infinite and those are not counting towards your qualified watch hours. So those do not count. There are also other things in the partner program such as super chats where when you're live streaming, you can ask for donations from your viewers and then you get a little bit more of a split. I think that split is 70, 30 currently in favor of you. Uh, so you can make a little bit of money there. But overall that is YouTube monetization as a whole in the YouTube Partner Program. You have to sign up for a Google AdSense account, but more on that later. Right now, I wanna talk about just getting your 4,000 qualified watch hours and how to do that. So a lot of people think, especially when they're just starting out and they're new to YouTube, that 4,000 watch hours, that's a lot of time. That's a lot of hours to get, and it seems like a daunting task. But I'm here to tell you that with a little bit of persistence and determination, it can be done actually quite quickly. So tip number one is mindset. You have to change your mindset into thinking that you're gonna be able to post 10 or 20 videos and bang this out quick. It's just not going to happen, at least not for the majority of us. Unless you have a following from another platform like a TikTok or an Instagram or something like that where you can move those watchers over to your YouTube channel, you're just not going to get a lot of interest, especially when you're starting out. Because people don't care about your personality. They don't care about you. They don't care about your content because they don't know who you are. You're so new. You're basically anonymous on this platform. So that's the mindset you're going to have to have. What I tend to think of it or to tell people is, you kind of got to go fishing. You got to bait viewers and send out lines and get people to come to you. You can't just put content out there and expect it to reach the world. You got to get the world and the viewers to come to you. So that's tip number one. Tip number two, and this is probably my most important tip, and that is create searchable content. What do I mean by this? You may have heard this term before, but I'm going to get into the nitty gritty details of exactly how to do this. So what I mean by this is in your niche, you're going to have people that are already searching videos in that niche. And what I want you to do is create videos that hook in those search, bring them in and bring in those viewers. So it's people already getting sucked into the search and then being funneled into your channel to find your content. Let's come up with an example, okay? Let's say you are uh, interested in dogs and your channel is all about dogs, whether it's dog leashes or reviews on dog products or maybe it's dog training, whatever it is in the dog niche, we're gonna get into exactly how to get search and use that to your advantage. So I'm gonna go on YouTube right now. I'm gonna go to the top of the search bar on the page. I'm gonna search just uh, new puppy, okay? I'm gonna hit space bar, new puppy, space bar. I'm not gonna hit enter. And what's gonna pop up are a bunch of suggestions. So new puppy tips, new puppy haul, new puppy training, new puppy essentials, new puppy surprise, new puppy vlog. The list goes on. There's about 20 suggested things that pop up. And what these suggestions are, these are active searches that people are using right now. These are what people are searching for in their search bar. These are the most popular search terms for a new puppy. So what I would 
do is I would go on here and I would write down all 20 of these or I'd type them up and I'd put them into a spreadsheet. First of all, I would use these terms as tags in my dog videos so it's related. And that's telling YouTube that my video pertains to these search terms. So when people search these terms, they're gonna need a backdoor entrance and they're gonna find your video that way. That's just one way to use the search tool to your advantage. Number two, I'm gonna use these search, exactly these search terms, these exact words, and I'm gonna use them maybe in my title or in my description, and I'm gonna create basically create a video around these search terms. Now, I'm not copying any exact videos. Basically, I'm gonna use the terms that are popular, and I'm gonna find what the audience is exactly looking for, and I'm gonna tailor my content to that. And what that's gonna do is it's gonna send out fishing lines, just like I said. You're gonna send out bait into the most popular pond where all these fish are already biting and eating things. And you're gonna to go to exactly where the audience is and you're gonna hook them into your videos. So maybe you go on Amazon, you buy a bunch of new puppy products that you can maybe later return. And then you do reviews on them and create a new puppy haul. Now I see that's the second most popular search term for new puppy because a lot of new puppy owners wanna know what it is to buy when they get their puppy home. So I would create a whole video about this. My top 10 items for new puppy owners or must have puppy accessories. And then I would create a nice title, must have puppy accessories or must have puppy tools for your new puppy. And I would put in the description, new puppy haul. And then I would talk about it and use those terms in my video. Welcome to the video, this is my new puppy haul video. And what that all is gonna do is it's called search engine optimization. Basically, you're gonna use this search tool to hook in those people into that new puppy video. And that's gonna get so many new viewers to that video and to your channel. And it's also gonna create uh, a funnel to your channel. You can now link that puppy video to other dog videos and it can keep people watching and keep them in your channel and maybe even subscribe. So that's gonna really increase your watch hours exponentially by using these search terms. So what I want you guys to do is create 10 to 20 videos right off the bat using this method. Go into search, find terms, find popular search terms within your niche and create searchable videos. Now that's just using YouTube search. What I want you to do additionally, this is tips two and three maybe, is I want you to go to Google and Yahoo, maybe even Facebook, and I want you to do this exact same thing. I want you to go to search bar in Google and type in, let's see what it says. Type in new puppy. And then I want you to hit spacebar and see what comes up. Now, new puppy haul doesn't come up here. I'm seeing a bunch of other suggested things. New puppy checklist, new puppy tips, new puppy shopping list, new puppy won't eat, new puppy diarrhea. These are all videos that you can create and content you can create and create videos around these search terms. And what it's gonna do is it's gonna push your YouTube channel up the search page to be able to maybe once people search new puppy checklist, they click on videos or at the top of this page or they click on videos and then now you can land on this front page and that's all search engine optimization that's getting people to your channel by using other tools. Now Google owns YouTube. So the move, more Google searchable terms that are in your video, in the title, in the net, in the description and in the actual video that you speak, the higher that video is gonna go up on popularity and the more searchable it's gonna become. If I'm bringing you value and you are new to you, YouTube, hit me with a subscribe because I'm bringing a lot more videos like this to help you grow your channel, grow your content, and grow your quality overall. Right, so now that you use search engine optimization and you have 10 to 20 videos under your belt, you'll start to see your hours increase, but it's still not there yet, right? Well, my tip number two is to use all of your networks you already currently have, meaning friends, family, acquaintances. Maybe you have a Facebook with 2,000 followers on there. I would simply go on there and be really honest. Hey guys, I'm just starting out on YouTube. I'm just starting this YouTube project and it's a dog channel. I would love for you guys to check out my video. Give me some pointers. Give me some things that I could do better on and what do you guys think? If you would, please like and subscribe to my videos. That's simply building the relationship with people you already have and getting them to convert over. Those are free watch hours. That's what I tell people. Those are, those are free views that you already have, I'm sure you have tons of friends and family that would love to help you out. Now, as long as you can get over the embarrassment of being new and having no views and no subscribers, who really cares, right? You're asking for help from people that already care about you. So I would go on Twitter, I would go on Facebook, I would go on TikTok, I would go on any socials that you already have. I would even be texting friends and family and older family members that you know and say, hey, hop on my YouTube channel, check out this link. Those are free watch hours that people would love to do. Also, 
Things that people don't usually do is I would watch your own videos. If you have multiple Google accounts or multiple YouTube accounts, every time you upload, hit those new Google accounts and watch your own videos, watch it through and get those watch hours up there. So that's tip number three. Tip number four, I would go out and find like-minded individuals. So I would hop on Facebook groups. Now Facebook groups are really popular right now, especially with the older crowds and whatnot. They congregate in these Facebook groups of like-minded individuals. So there'll be Facebook groups on dog training or new puppies or Dalmatian Facebook groups. You get in those Facebook groups, you build relationships, and then you share your content. Say, hey, I made this video about new puppy essentials that I really need. Would you guys watch this video and tell me what you think and maybe give me some ideas of what you think I should add in my next video? That's just gonna build community, build relationships, and I guarantee you that Facebook group is gonna start interacting with you. They're gonna watch your content. They may even subscribe. That's just gonna build your watch hours even more. So find like-minded individuals. That's tip number four. Utilize Facebook groups and other groups like Discord and, and Reddit. They all have little groups and little communities that niche down into the niche that matches your video. So I would definitely use that as well. Tip number five, and this one takes a lot of work, but I actually found it to be quite Quite effective. Now I'm in tech and cameras, so it's a little bit different for me. This may not fit your niche, but it depends on what you're doing. I like to use Twitter hashtags and because Twitter is such a big community and hashtags are so widely used. So say the new camera comes out like the Sony ZV-1. I'll hop on Twitter and I'll type in hashtag ZV-1 and click the hashtag and I'll scroll through and I'll find people that are maybe asking questions or that are confused or just bought the camera. And maybe I have a video like new set up tips and tricks for the ZV-1. I'll copy that link and then I'll go through and find through the hashtag and find people that maybe could use my content that I could bring value to. And I'll interact with them. I'll maybe answer questions or give them tips or trips or maybe someone has spec specification, what? <laughs> questions on specs like can it live stream or does the back screen turn off during live stream, stuff like that. I'll answer those questions and say, hey, want more answers on the ZV-1? Check out my video and I'll tweet them the link to the video. That right there is just more hooks, more bait that's out there bringing people in. Now say that person retweets that and they have a following of a thousand people that are also photographers. And now that video is just getting more traction off Twitter and that's just moving people over that are already looking for your content. There's people out there that wanna see the video that you make, they just don't know about you. So make them see you. That's my tip number four. Now of course I have to jump in here and say, you know, your content has to be good. You gotta have good titles, you gotta have good thumbnails because even if someone came to me and said, Dom, check out this camera channel about this question you had, it's a great video. And I look at the video and the thumbnail is trash. It's some iPhone photo in bad lighting and a terrible title. I'm not gonna click on it. You gotta look professional. You can go out there and set these baits and set these hooks, but your content has to be good. So make sure you have quality thumbnails, quality titles, and good descriptions. Moving on, I have another tip, tip number five, I think we're at, that I say piggyback on other content creators. So find someone in your YouTube channel. So. I'm just gonna give you tangible things that we can work on. Let's go back to YouTube right now. Video, let's see new puppy training. I, I search that in and then let's see what comes up here. Zach George's dog training revolution. I click that and I see this uh, channel's got 3.23 million followers already. Is Zach George's dog training revolution. This guy already has a huge community and a huge uh, network in this dog training niche. So what I would do is I would go to his channel, I would check out his videos, I would go sort by, and I would see most popular. Now I can see his most watched videos. Okay, three easy things to teach your puppy. That's got 13 million views. How to potty train, 10 million views, et cetera, et cetera. Seven million, six million, six million. He's got, uh, he's got videos up here that are already showing you what people in your niche are searching for, what they're watching and what they want to see. Now, I'm not saying copy all his content and make the exact same videos. I'm not saying that at all. But I am saying viewers that are watching three easy things to teach your puppy puppy training techniques are also gonna wanna know maybe your puppy training techniques. Maybe you have different techniques or different tricks and different tips that they also gonna wanna see. So I would 
pick out a video, three easy things to teach your new puppy. Now maybe you have three additional things to teach your puppy or three things that you would teach your puppy that maybe aren't mentioned in this video. Watch the video through, see what he has to say, and maybe you have a difference of opinion or you have other fresh content that people can see. Then I'd create a video around that. Now we already know 13 million people are gonna wanna watch this video. And if you even get 1% of those people watching your video, searching this video, and your, maybe your video comes up next, or maybe YouTube really likes your video that you create and they suggest it after this video. Now, if 1% of the people watch this, now you have 130,000 people watching your video. So as you can see, this can really bring huge benefits by doing this. And what you're doing is you're seeing what the audience is already looking at. Now, again, you're not copying content. You're just seeing what is popular on this channel, seeing what people are searching for and viewing, and then you're creating similar content that they may be also want to watch. So for me, a good example is when people are searching for a new camera to buy, they're not just going to watch one review. So if I make a review video that I know is popular on two or three other channels, well, people usually watch two or three reviews on cameras before they make a purchase. Same thing with dog training or any other niche, if it's a cooking channel, maybe they're gonna wanna see two or three different recipes and that's all you're giving people is you're giving people more options and that's gonna get your watch time going really quickly because you're now creating content that you know audiences are going to want to watch. Now, a little pro tip here is I would say also you can mention other videos. So if I'm reviewing a, a camera and I know there's another really good review on that same camera, I would say something like, hey, check out MKBHD. He did this really great review on this channel on this camera too, I'll provide the link below. Now that backlink tells YouTube that you're also linking that video to it and YouTube really likes backlinks and so they also push your channel a little bit more because they'll know that content is linked somehow and there's suggestions there. I don't really know how that algorithm works but I do know that it does work and it pushes your video up. Backlinks are another little pro tip so throw those in the description below and mention those videos. My last tip for hitting that 4,000 qualified watch hours is determination. I want you to blindly put out content and see what sticks. Maybe you create 10 videos and nine of them don't really work. They don't get traction. They're not really fitting your niche. They're not really what the audience wants to see. Maybe your thumbnails suck, but one of them does really well. And that one can really pop you off. And that's why determination is really key here. You got to throw out a lot of content, get your, you know, 10,000 hours, put out a lot of different videos and see what works and what doesn't work and then grow from there. It's just learning from your own mistakes. Putting out a video that maybe gets two watch hours, that doesn't do anything bad for your channel at this stage because you're so new. So putting out different videos, different type of videos, maybe review videos, maybe opinion videos, haul videos, try different things, try different ideas. And those different ideas, one may stick out of 10, but that's what can really get you to those 4,000 watch hours really quick. That's all I got for part one of my YouTube monetization. These things will get you to 4,000 hours. Now they may not get you there in the first month or two, but stay with it. I promise you, if you do these things within six months, you should be close to your goal. If you're putting out consistent work on a somewhat frequent basis, I would say minimum you have to be putting out one video per week, but I would prefer two to three videos per week at this stage to really just get the ball rolling and see what sticks. Stay tuned for a part two on my monetization video series here. Part two is going to be how to get a thousand subscribers. I appreciate you guys. I'll see you in the next video. Peace.